Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and today's gardening helpful tip is to discuss cross-pollination and the importance of having a variety of species of plants in your garden all within the same genus and we're going to be talking about um, the classifications momentarily. Um, this video was inspired when I did the banana video talking about how to remove suckers or the little pups that are at the base of the tree and why to do it and how to do it and with this video I got inspired again once I shared the reading of this particular label and if you want to zoom in over here it's actually this one over here and I'm sitting next to a ice cream banana plant which is right here and on the very back so here it says ice cream banana and I planted this last year and I'm going to show you how tall they get within one year but on the back side over here it says if desired Use one of the varieties below for pollination. And then it gives you a list of all these different bananas that you, you could also plant in your garden. They include um, the Cavendish, which is your popular Chiquita banana variety, the Goldfinger, which is a great tasting banana variety, the Grand Nan, ice cream banana, which I um, planted, as I said last year, the Ladyfinger, um, Mysore are, are popular varieties you'll typically find in your nursery. But um, the thing that concerned me was right at the very top it says, this fruit does not need pollination or a pollinator. And this led me to believe, I'm like, so this one doesn't need a pollinator, yet they're giving some recommendations in regards to what banana varieties to actually have in your garden to, to improve pollination within your garden. Um, I know from my background that actually having more species in your backyard, they're all within the same genus, which again, I'm gonna explain momentarily, will actually not only um, result in more fruit, but typically better quality fruit, sometimes larger fruit. And um, I'm gonna share a couple other points. We know that, and this is another important consideration, I'm gonna share this with you, I'm gonna come to you this time. But the avocados, the most popular of the avocado varieties here is the Haas avocado. Um, there's another label I have here for a Haas avocado, which shows, I'm trying to see here, which one says it? It says, here we go. So here we go. Haas avocado, it reads right at the top. This fruit needs a pollinator. If you actually do your research on Haas avocados, you can actually plant a Haas avocado and with no avocados within miles of your house, your fruit will in fact still bear and produce avocados unless there's other issues in your soil that are preventing it from, from holding fruit. So, Haas avocados do not, do not need a pollinator. The reason they're actually writing this is there's a lot of research out there that say you can actually increase fruit production by anywhere from 5% to 20% more if you actually had a different variety of avocado in your garden to help with the cross pollination. And the pollination travels by wind uh, and more commonly um, you know, with the help of the honeybee. So Haas avocado. The Haas avocado is considered a type A avocado and if you read on the back it says use one of these varieties below for pollination and hopefully these are all type B avocados. I know in fact that bacon is a type B avocado and the Forte is a type B avocado but you need to double check and research on the internet if the other ones that are listed below which are Jim, Nabel, White Shell, Zutano is a popular one I see also in the nursery. Um, one of the, the most popular I see is, is typically the, the Forte avocado and bacon. Um, but Forte, if you research it, is an excellent tasting avocado variety if you're using it for cross-pollination and to increase the number of fruit, the quality of fruit, um, so on and so forth. So, so this is another example of why to introduce two different species in your garden. Before I um, go any further, and we're standing here next to these bananas, I want to show you how big my ice cream banana plant can get. So follow me over here. So, I'm gonna wait for you until you're ready. So this here is my ice cream banana plant. I'm actually six feet tall and you can see I'm reaching eight feet tall and this plant just keeps on going. We're still about um, a month or two away from it going into bloom. And so it's usually in the summer that um, the banana plant will actually bloom and hopefully carry fruit by the fall um, or going into winter. So this is the ice cream banana plant. You can see a beautiful, magnificent tropical plant to actually have in your garden landscape and if it actually grows in your growing zone and I did a video that you can actually find that talks about growing zones and let's head back um, over there again 
I'm okay, I'm coming. So we talked about the importance of actually having a variety of species all within the same genus within your garden. I want to explain what that is. Let me come over to you here. So this here talks about the scientific classification, also known as taxonomy. It's a system of categorizing living things. The number one, there's actually seven um, classifications. The highest and the largest is the um, kingdom. And within the kingdom, there's the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the protista kingdom, and the monera kingdom. So there's five categories within the kingdom classification. And then from there, there's the phylum, the class, the order, the family, the genus, and then the species. And the species is a very specific categorization. For people, it's homo sapiens. Um, for the Haas avocado, um, that's a specific species. For the um, Enfrete avocado is a specific species. The stone fruits, such as the Bing cherries, is a specific species. You've got the Alberte peach and, and almonds. All of those are actually categorized under stone fruits. And then under the Musa, which I've got, and let me actually go back now to genus. So genus is the classification just before you get specific. like it's all shaded how does it work better like look it's all shade like look at it even if you tap it's what would make it better shade on it where that's why it's you like, i see sun on the paper no but it's like your hands and your how head. about if i did this i think if i come to you it's better like don't come, come over my shoulder every though. time you come yeah come over my shoulder let me just keep going john and julia are texting me they're going nuts about your grandma i don't know what the hell's maybe going. she's dying i don't know keep going it doesn't turn light. How about you, if you tap? Like, it doesn't matter. Look, what if you go in the there's shade? something wrong with the camera. You come here? I think because it's too hot. Come here. Yeah, now it's working. See, this is so much better now. Okay. How are you going to do this? Just zoom in. Yeah. So, the scientific classification or the taxonomy, which categorizes all living things on planet Earth is a system of categorizing living things. Number one is kingdom. And within the kingdoms, there's five different categories. There's the plant, the animal, the fungi, the protista, and the monera. And we're interested in today's video about the plant category or the plant kingdom. After kingdom is phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. A total of seven, um, seven categorizations for identifying living things on planet earth one way i've actually remembered and memorized the different orders within the right categories is a mnemonic which goes keep pots clean or family gets sick so if you need to memorize this for a test that's a um, a way to actually remember for your exams so if we take a look here, so plant is the, is the most general categorization within the kingdom. We're going now down to genus. So under genus, there's the citrus genus, the persia genus, which identifies all of the avocado varieties, the prunus, which is the stone fruits, such as being cherries, peaches, almonds, plums, apricots, are all species under the genus prunus, and then musa. We're interested in um, bananas today in, in part with our video, and specific species would be Cavendish, ice cream. Um, we just talked about the apple variety. Anyways, I just blanked out. So that's your, that's your musa. The next thing I wanna share here is the parts of a flower. The flower consists of petals, which are what brings in the color and attracts the, the hummingbirds and the bees and other insects to come and get drawn into the flower, in addition to the scent that it shares. But the petal gives off the color. The stamen is the male part of the flower, which produces the pollen. And then the pistil is the center part of the flower, which holds the ovules or the ovaries. So the stamen produces the pollen, which then goes to the pistil, 
which is this part of the um, organ of the uh, flower, and here are the eggs. Let me actually show you a real, um, a real example. Come follow me over here. So if you take a look over here, this is a hibiscus flower, um, and within it, and within it, you can actually see these here are the stamens, which produce the pollen. And somehow, either the wind or an insect's gonna have to take that pollen and bring it into the pistil, which is at the top, which will then travel all the way down this tube to the ovule, which is actually right underneath and in this zone. Let me show you one other example. So here we are now next to one of my Meyer lemon tree. This is um, originated from China. It's actually a cross lemon and mandarin orange is what most scientists believe and this actually produces a moderately sweet lemon and very popular for baking and cooking needs. But if you take a look in here, let me actually show you the flowers, if you can come over here real quick, over my shoulder. So see, here's the flower. And if I can take one of these off, which you shouldn't be doing this in your garden, but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. But you can see these petals are actually falling off and you can actually see the little fruit actually right in there. I'm gonna to try to demonstrate one more time for you now. So here's another example. If you take a look this way, let me get over here. So if you take a look, again, here are the petals. And we'll remove this so you can actually see the parts. And then we've got the stamen or the male part of the flower and these are, um, you can see the, the yellow pollen that's on there that the honeybees will usually get on their legs. And it's starting to stick on my finger. You can see that here it is, the pollen. So the pollen gets onto the pistil, which is right here in the center. If we peel that back, so now we just took off all of the stamens. You can see that there's now some pollen getting onto the pistil. It's all sticking onto that pistil. And then some of that pollen will travel down the tube and get into the ovary. And the ovary actually holds the ovules which will then get fertilized by the pollen and start developing the fruit. If we take a look over here, one more thing I want to um, point out is sometimes fertilization doesn't work. Um, whether the tree is carrying too much fruit or the fertilization's off, sometimes the fruit, the tree will actually drop excess fruit, as you can see indicated here by this yellow fruit that's about to fall off. It's kind of in the shade. I'm going to try to put in the sun if I could. So hopefully you can see that, how it's a yellow fruit. This is about to drop and this will just fall off and go back down to the ground. So, and here's another example, another yellow, another yellow fruit. So the plant's dropping this, and it could be in part, and let me show you if we can come back over here. So here we are next to a Valencia orange that we have here in our garden as well. It was installed last year and bloomed hundreds of flowers, and currently it's holding maybe a dozen fruit. If you take a look here, you can actually zoom in. And again, it's holding on to what the plant can support this year. Um, hopefully it's been cross-pollinated with the other citrus that are here in the garden. And, and consider this, even though this is an orange tree, you don't need another orange variety. Being that we're all in the same genus, we've got the lemons, the grapefruits, the, um, the oranges, um, anything that are within the citrus family will cross-pollinate each other. We've got a lime tree over there in the corner. So all of those will help actually ensure that it's gonna make better seeds, just like with people, you want to have genetics that actually will strengthen and, and create a better child. And the seeds that are inside the fruit, um, even on the seedless variety, cross-pollination does improve size, quality, and quantity of fruits, regardless of whether or not it says it can fertilize or, or is self-fertile or requires another tree for cross-pollination. And I want you to also want to share another thing. Um, I want to make this important tip. Most citrus are actually very susceptible to sunburn. You'll notice that most of my trees here in the garden are painted white. Um, I just wanted to share, I've got this product here, Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. It's an organic paint, um, unlike the other products that are on the shelf. And it also, the paint protects from sunburn. And then it's got oils in there that, that protect against insects as well as rodents. So it's a product to hopefully give this tree the longest and healthiest life possible. And every year we coat it with the Ivory, Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. So, this here is our orange variety. Let me show you one other thing here. Let me actually pick that up. So today, we've already got the ice cream banana in our garden. I read that label to you um, in regards to the ice cream banana plant where it says 
this fruit does not need a pollinator, but then on the back side it says, but if you want to cross pollinate, these are some you know great varieties. What the goal is, and even though the ice cream banana is going to bloom this year, I'm now going to plant this variety of banana, which is a um, Manzano banana. I'll share the label with you if you want to zoom in here. So it says Manzano banana. Um, the characteristics of this on the label say it's a sweet fruit with slight tart, vigorous, fast grower. It'll probably grow at least 10 feet in this first year, eaten fresh or cooked, and self fertile. Um, so, and then here's the height on it. It says growth rate fast, and the height is gonna be somewhere between 12 and 14 feet when it's done, which is gonna be close to the height of the ice cream banana plant. And the goal is when this goes into fruit next year and goes into bloom, hopefully it'll be blooming the same time as one of the pups, because once the ice cream banana um, plant actually produces its fruit, the entire plant actually comes out, and the pups actually um, replace the parent plant, and the cycle continues. Anyways, I hope you found this video. I gotta say one more thing. <clears throat> and so the next step we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna show the importance of actually creating um, a sunscreen, an organic sunscreen for your plants. I'm gonna be installing this Manzano banana variety later on this afternoon. Our temperatures are gonna be close to between 90 and 100 degrees today. We're here in Los Angeles and what I have here is just a spray bottle full of water. I'm gonna take this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. Manufacturer says we can take about a teaspoon, tablespoon quantity amount of this per gallon of water and, and, and basically put in a spray bottle. I'm gonna shake that up here and then just spray it. I usually do this at the end after the installation of the tree, but I can do this now as well to keep this plant cool because I'm still a few hours away from preparing the hole. Um, but if you want to zoom in real quick so you can see what the sunblock actually looks like, and this is superior to using any latex paint that have chemicals that are damaging um, to plant tissue. Most paints actually have algicides and fungicides. An algae is a plant, and so if it's an algicide, it's going to kill algae and it's also going to harm your plant tissues as well. But this is a product that's actually safe for your plants. Um, say for most plants, I usually test a small area before applying to your whole tree, but I've successfully done this with bananas and this will help keep it cool while the roots get established and, and off to a good start. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe below to watch all the rest of our dozens of Ivory Organics educational gardening videos. Again, thanks for watching and happy gardening.